The WannaCry attack of two, three weeks ago was ransomware targeting hundreds of thousands of computers using one specific software vulnerability. The criminals then seek to extract money from the victims to, to, to make their ransom. What we saw with that was even though it infected hundreds, thousands of computers around the world, the criminals gathered a ransom into a Bitcoin address or series of addresses, but they didn't actually manage to take that value for themselves. It's still held in Bitcoin and the criminals can't take that for themselves because if they do, policing, law enforcement around the world will be able to identify them and track them down. The difference with the not Petya attacks that we're seeing in the past couple of days is it feels different. So it, has a, it is a much more technologically adept attack. Uh, WannaCry was quite basic technologically. This one is much more complicated and much more robust in its method of attack. It does a number of different ways of causing real chaos on the computer systems that it infects. Strangely, the ability to gather the ransom from it is exceptionally poor. They've only used one Bitcoin address and that victims need to communicate by email as a way of getting the decryption key if they pay. Now that email was taken offline shortly after the attack began and it would suggest that perhaps there is another reason, another motivation behind this attack and that gaining money from it wasn't the principal uh, means of, uh, of the attack. Because if you were seeking as a criminal business model to gather money, in return for a decryption key for files you've infected, this isn't going to work. It's the biggest challenge of any cyber or digital forensic investigation is attribution. Who did it? So far it's not clear. What we can see, I think, is that this attack began within a software within the Ukrainian tax authority system, and that seems to be specifically targeted, or at least it's, uh, it's exploiting a vulnerability that not many other systems would have. It's discrete to that, uh, that entity. So whilst attribution and identifying who's behind it will take some time, it may never happen at all. Uh, we look at the WannaCry attacks, there is still no definitive source for that. What we encourage people to do, what we encourage law enforcement and government to do is to work together to try and follow that evidence, identify the originator where possible, not to draw conclusions too soon and take the time to really objectively identify what's happened, where it's come from, most importantly, how to try and prevent and protect against it in the future. Within the UN Office on Drugs and Crime and uh, the Global Programme on Cybercrime, we equip and mentor police, prosecutors and criminal justice actors like judges in how to investigate and counter cybercrime. At a policy level, we bring member states from around the world together here in Vienna to allow them to have that policy discussion on how to work closer together to counter cybercrime legally, politically, diplomatically. But I think the key within this is growing those relationships and the trust amongst member states to work together uh, and using the internet as a force for good. We see ransomware has been, a, has been a key threat for the past couple of years. I think what we've seen with WannaCry is that it's brought it onto the political radar in a way that it hadn't been before. It's brought it onto public consciousness in a way that hadn't happened before. And that, in many ways, isn't a bad thing. Growing awareness of the public is absolutely essential to defeating and preventing against cybercrime. We often hear that the public are the biggest vulnerability. People go onto websites that are dangerous click on attachments and emails, put USB sticks into computers where they shouldn't, but actually the public can be a force for good. They can be your force multiplier, the biggest, strongest way of preventing cybercrime if people are aware, if they're educated on how to minimize their risk. So in this instance, we use as many public platforms as we can to get that message out there. Back up your data. You can't be held to ransom for data that you hold somewhere else. Have a good anti-malware, anti-virus capability on your computer, on your phone. Make sure you have cybersecurity policies in place if you're a business or a government. And make sure that people understand what the risk of attachments in email or in infected websites are. That way, if people are aware, they are less likely to bring risk on and to report where a risk occurs. And when we see an attack, be it like Petya, WannaCry, anything else, then they know what to do. They know how to try and mitigate and minimize that threat.